listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Ty Brown of SixFigureDogBusiness.com. Now, this is the show where we teach you how to start or grow your dog-related business to a healthy six-figure per year profit. Now, today on the show, I'm really excited because we've got with us today a special guest. He's a VP of business development for a company. His name is Jared Katz, and he's going to give us some amazing information on how you can grow your business. So stay right with us, and we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Buster, you're telling me my dog food products can't go on your shelves? That's right. Didn't pass one of my Petco certified nutrition checklists. Sorry, Wayne. Who made these checklists? Geniuses. Very smart guys. Well, it's good enough for most grocery stores. Do you see cheese puffs on my shelves? Mayonnaise? Soda pop? No. That's because I ain't running no grocery store, Wayne. Your pets will get better nutrition, I guarantee it. Petco, with healthy pets go. Enter the code SFDB10. SFDB, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. your business to reach out and invite in our audience. We have a brand new trademark concept called Info Seeds. Info Seeds are short 20 second seeds of information about your place of business, practice or service is the best, most cost effective way to invite us in. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit the website. PetLifeRadio.com Click on sponsorship information. There you can listen to a sample of Info Seed. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities are available this year americans are expected to spend a jaw-dropping 36 billion on their pets from lighted leashes to high-end spa products the discriminating pet owner can find just about anything to pamper his or her pet hi this is michelle fern join me every week for best bets for pets where we'll talk about the latest pet products and talk to the companies that make them Best Bets for Pets, every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We're back, and uh, as I mentioned before, with us today is uh, Jared Katz, and first of all, thank you for being on the show, Jared. I appreciate it. Ah, oh, my pleasure, and I'm, I'm very excited to be here. And so, I don't want to tell people who you are. Why don't you tell us who you are, what your background is, and uh, who you work for? Sure. Uh, again, my name is Jared Katz. I'm the Vice President of Business Development for uh, PetSitting.com. Uh, PetSitting.com is part of the family uh, pet network. We are a strategic marketing organization specializing in the pet industry. We're pretty much you know, catering to the pet business world and pet owners around the country and um, trying to increase the business of pet businesses around the country as well as trying to make lives easier for pet owners. Been in the lead generation and online business space for about eight years now and focusing predominantly on the, the pet market, and that's really where we're going in the future as well. So who do you guys work with? I mean, uh, dog sitters, dog trainers. Who's your primary target that you're working with? Actually, there, it's seven services. So we work across North America, uh, USA and Canada. We work with dog walkers, pet sitters, boarders, pet groomers, dog trainers, pet waste removal companies, and doggy daycare uh, facilities. And we work with professional insured organizations. You know, that's very important to us that we're working with actual businesses that do this for a living and not um, just one off people that are kind of looking to make an extra buck. We want to help the industry and we're looking for professional companies that, that actually uh, this is their business and this is what they breathe. And so, you know, that's what we like to connect with uh, pet owners around the, the country. 
Okay. And from what I've been able to gather, you guys are pretty unique. I mean, in, in the business world, there have for years been companies that do lead generation for other companies. But from what I've been able to tell in the pet space, that that's, you guys are the best company out there, the biggest company out there, and providing kind of the most leads out there. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, that's accurate. Um, we pretty much pioneered this in the, in the, the pet industry. It, you know, it wasn't being done. You know, we thought there was a need for it. We thought it was in the best interest for pet owners around the country. You know, we want them to get good help and, uh, and you know, find good services. So we thought it would be a great idea to aggregate, you know, the, what we feel to be the elite pet care companies around the country. So we have a sales team and a sales associates that are trained to find the top Top rated, the top, uh, you know, in terms of quality and references, uh, the top pet care companies around the country. And uh, we've created a tremendous network. And what we do is we match up pet owners that are seeking services in their local area with uh, pr- professional pet care companies around the country. So we created a, a nice little matchmaking company. Okay. And it's this expertise that I really wanted to tap into. And, and before we kind of get into um, some of the nuts and bolts. Yep. Let's get a little bit of definition, simply because when we talk lead generation, sometimes we lose the focus of some people because it's, it's not necessarily something that people talk about a lot. So why don't you define what is lead generation? It might sound like a simple question, but uh, why don't you give us your take on that? That's actually the, the best question around. I feel that it's the unknown, and companies don't understand actually what lead generation is. Even if they're doing it, they don't even understand you know, what it is. So the actual... You know, the basic definition of lead generation is really the creation of prospective customers for a business or service. So in case of a of a pet service company, it's the creation of a prospective pet owner that's interested in your service. And you know, lead generation takes place in many forms. I mean, there there's many different types of lead generation strategies out there. I mean, the most basic one and the most important lead generation strategy are, are referrals and, you know, word of mouth. I mean, that in, in essence is lead generation. You know, it's inherently part of your business doing well and, and people thinking you have a great company and a great service. But that in itself is your most basic case of, of lead gen. And I think, you know, by definition, it's creating prospective customers for your business. So it's crucial to the growth of any pet business out there. Okay. And you mentioned something. You mentioned that, uh, you know, it's, it's any activity that's creating these interested, uh, interested pet owners or Correct. whatever the industry we happen to be mm-hmm. talking about. Let me ask you, is it good to have multiple sources of lead generation? Should you have one or two? I mean, what do you recommend? Yeah. I mean, it, it's absolutely essential to have multiple sources of lead generation. So, you know, I think at first, it's important as a company to understand and map out the goals of your organization. So, you know, as a company, are you looking to grow and add employees? Are you looking to expand territories? Are you looking to expand service offerings? Are you getting into this business because you want to grow it, provide the best service possible, you know, add a bunch of employees, you know, expand your services and what you do. So you start out doing dog walking and pet sitting and then you add training and you add daycare and you build a facility. You know, what's your strategy here? It, or are you more of getting into the business as a hobby, you know, are you, and you're just content with having, you know, two dog walking clients and, and you don't want to grow anymore. And it's basically if your goal is to grow a company and, and sustain a nice profitable company and get it to a point where you, you could grow and add independent contractors or full time employees and have a nice quality business, then Absolutely, it's essential to have multiple lead generation platforms, understand what it takes for lead generation and you know, work with it in every way possible so that you have a, a pipeline of customers and new clients coming in the door constantly. Now, if you're on the flip side and you're like, yeah, well, you know, for me, this is not really a business. It's more of a hobby. I'm content with just having two clients and, and I don't really want to you know, grow it all that much and you know, I'm fine where it is. Then you know what? Lead generation is not as crucial for you. It's not really, you know, more, you're not really taking it more of a business. You're doing it more as something to do on the side. But, you know, outside of referrals, there are, you know, many different types of lead generation strategies. So if you are looking to grow your business, you know, there's other lead generation sources and strategies that you should go with. Do you want me to go into some of those or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I was listening to a marketing uh, 
seminar the other day and they were talking about, you know, your lead generation pie and imagine cutting it up into eight slices and <laughs> right. making sure making sure you've got eight different sources of lead generation. So I don't know that you need eight, but but I'd love to hear some ideas on what are a few that you're familiar with. Right. And like I said first, referrals I think that honestly is the backbone of any good company. Everyone's going to get referrals. You know, if you're a good company, your clients that you have are going to recommend you to their peers and other pet owners and you're going to, you know, the local vets or the local stores are going to promote you and say, oh, you know, John's local dog walking service is fantastic. You know, I think you should do it. It's, you know, it's great. And that comes within. That's, you know, you as a uh, as an owner saying, you know, I want my company to be the best. I'm going to be the best in terms of customer support and customer service. And I'm going to provide the best quality service to my clients. And, and therefore, I'm going to get, you know, this great referrals and, and word of mouth. And I think, you know, the growth through referrals is fantastic. And that's something that will continue to happen. But that's just a, a product of you providing a good service. Other types of lead generation programs that, you know, someone could w- run in a local market are, you know, localized marketing efforts. You know, you know, having, you know, a local college student distribute flyers for you, go to some local trade shows in, uh, in and around the area and, and start meeting pet owners in, in different circuits. Go to local stores, local pet stores, and put down business cards and flyers and signs. And, and this is a way to kind of generate some interest and some brand awareness within your local community that you do exist, you do provide a product, and this in turn will then create phone calls and, and visits to your website. A more advanced approach is local online marketing, you know, which takes place in many forms. There's you know, search engine marketing where you you know, you do where you work with the different search engines where you're doing pay per click advertising and AdWords, and you're working with Bing and Yahoo and Google, and you're working campaigns to generate pay per click AdWord advertising, which could be a great source of lead gem, but again, it requires some technical skill, and if not handled properly, it could actually, you know, cost more than you're bringing in. So it's very important to really fully understand that type of business before getting into it. Within the local online marketing, there's also Paper impression marketing, which like uh, pay per click is risky. Paper impression is where you post some type of banner or advertisement on a on a site of similar interest, some type of pet site, and based off of the traffic of that site, you're going to be paying for your ad space up there. There's also banners and other types of different online marketing approaches that you could take. But again, this type of lead generation exercise marketing could get expensive and it requires an expertise and it requires training and if not handled correctly the cost could get out of hand so we you know we preface it by saying you know make sure that you fully understand what you're getting into before you do it and maybe speak to a professional about you know understanding those types of of programs but if you really have a good understanding for it it could be a good source of business you know later on I actually want to pick your brain on that exact subject I want to find out from you later on how do we know if our lead generation efforts are worth it? You know, how can we track this kind of stuff? But okay. you mentioned some key points here. You've talked about lead generation is the key to growth. Lead generation is the key to expanding territories. It's yes. the key to offering new services. I mean, it's the key to so many things. I have to ask you, why do so many business owners overlook it? You know what? It seems like in the pet industry, you know, based off of our experience, we, we find that a lot of people that get into the pet services industry get into it because of their passion of pets and not because of their knowledge in the business world. Mm-hmm. And we notice a lot of businesses fail because they enter into the pet services space. They become a dog walker or a pet sitter because they love animals. And obviously, it's very important to be an animal lover in the business. You know, you want to have a passion about it. But it's equally important to have a good business sense and understand that running a professional pet services company requires a tremendous amount of business knowledge. You have to know operations and be able to schedule and be able to generate new business and understand, you know, what is the cost per acquisition of a new client and, you know, how much am I willing to pay for for this new client and what is the average lifespan of a client and, and things like that. And we feel that business owners overlook lead generation because of the lack of understanding and knowledge of it. So, you know, I think a lot of business owners don't understand what lead generation is. They they don't understand the definition of lead generation, why it's important for their business, why it's important for the growth of their business, because every business is cyclical. You know, you you have a new client, you generate a new client. Well, it might a new client probably lasts in your business for three years. 
if you don't have a pipeline and do lead generation and generate new business, after three years, the clients that you do have will eventually fall away. They'll move. They, you know, pets, you know, mm-hmm. they have a life cycle. And you always need to have new clients in your pipeline in order to sustain a business. And that's just to sustain a business, you know, as a flat line. In order to grow the business, you have to work multiple sources of lead generation so that you have a consistent pipeline so that you could generate new business and expand your market and expand your business as a whole. So I really think that business owners overlook lead generation because just a, a lack of awareness and knowledge of the business industry in itself and more because they're focused on the passion, you know, the passion they have for animals itself. And it's really a nice blend of the two that will create a successful company. And uh, I want to take a break. But when we come back, I want to talk to you about, because I know where your company is, uh, you know, is a master and where you yourself educate clients about or your clients about is how to actually track this, how to make sure you know that the amount of money you're putting into lead generation comes out on the other end as a profit. And so stay with us, folks. We're going to come right back here in a second with Jared Katz. We're going to figure out how to take your lead generation to the next level and start growing your business. So stay right with us. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash SFDB to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. How would you like your business to reach out and invite in our audience? We have a brand new trademark concept called Info Seeds. Info Seeds are short 20 second seeds of information about your place of business, practice, or service. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit PetLifeRadio.com. Click on sponsorship information. There you can listen to a sample of Info Seed or email us at PetLifeRadio.com. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities are available. They are my friends, they are my children, they are the furry builders and kids. They are my family, they understand me, that's how I love my pets. I love my pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available on iTunes. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Blake here with my sidekick, Super Smiley. <laughs> the giant mutt and spokes dog for throwaways. You're listening to Pet Life Radio, and I'd like to tell you about our brand new show, A Super Smiley Adventure. Our show explores adventures with animals. They can be traveling, out in the world trips, or inner journeys where our animals lead us to inspiration and self discovery, or just plain fun adventures. Join us here on Pet Life Radio on A Super Smiley Adventure. <laughs> Good boy. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. And in the last uh, in the last segment, we were talking with Jared Katz. We we're talking about uh, you know what is lead generation. You know what are some different sources of lead generation. What I want to talk to you now about, Jared, is is like I say, what you guys are masters at educating your clients about. Talk to me a little bit about the lifetime value of a client. What does that mean? Right, and that's important in our business. So our method of uh, lead generation is is online lead generation. So what PetSitting.com does is we provide real-time leads of a pet owner interested in the service that you're offering. So if you're a dog walker or a pet sitter, we'll provide you a, a lead in real time to your inbox for via email or text message so you get the lead in real time. And it's on to you to take that lead, call them, and try to win the business. So it's very important to understand 
the return on any type of, of lead generation that you're doing. You want to be able to calculate and track and do everything. And you need to understand what is the future value of your business. You know, so what's the future value of a customer? So, you know, what, really what we do is with our clients is, is we break it down, you know, into, you know, what a client will earn per month. So uh, we'll break it down into an example. So if you're a dog walking company, and, uh, you know, you offer, you know, full-time midday dog walks for, uh, you know, business. And what you have is um, a midday dog walk probably earns around $300 a month. And so the key is how much does it cost to generate that business? So you got to make sure you understand the cost per acquisition on a marketing program. And so you're saying, uh, you know, let's say he is generating $300 per month. And uh, when you're looking at lifetime value, you're assuming that you're going to be a client for, what, six months, a year? Do you have assumptions that you can make? Yeah, well, what we do is we say a dog walking client, a midday dog walking client, generates about $300 a month. And you got to understand that a midday dog walking client should probably last you about three years. So a lifetime value of a dog walking client could be about $10,000 in revenue. And so what we're pointing out to a client is what we say to them is, if I give you a new dog walking client, you know, a brand new dog walking client that's going to give you about $300 a month. And you, let's say a dog walking client will last you about three years. That's about $10,000 in revenue that you'll make from this dog walking client across a three-year period. What would you pay? What would be the value that would be worth it for you to pay for that new dog walking client? And would you pay $80 for that dog walking client? Would you pay $100 for that dog walking client? And what we find in our industry is that a lot of businesses will say, "Mm, I don't know. And that's a complete red flag right there because the answer should be absolutely yes. Why wouldn't you pay $100 to win a residual dog walking client that will last you months and months and months, even if it's six months or a year that the client lasts You'll make back that return within one year. And that's what our sales associates are trained to do. They're trained to teach clients that with specifically our program, you'll close one out of three to one out of four leads that we get to you. So let's say a lead costs you $20 or $25 per lead. So if you close three out of four of our leads, let's say $25, that means for every $75 to $100 that you spend, you're going to get a new dog walking client. Now, wouldn't that makes sense. Wouldn't you do that all day long? Wouldn't you spend, wouldn't you outlay $100 to win a dog walking client that is going to pay you, let's say, to two to $300 a month? And what we find is that a lot of companies get nervous about this and don't understand it. And what we do is we have our sales associates, you know, spend a lot of time with every client and explaining to them the cost per acquisition. So, it's very important for a company to understand for a pet sitting client or a dog walking client, you know, take your current metrics, you know, your current statistics of the all the clients that you have and figure out averages. How long does a dog walking client usually last for you? How long does a pet sitting client usually last for you? What is your monthly revenue on a pet sitting client? What is your monthly revenue on a dog walking client? And take averages. And then you work off of averages to create new lead generation models. So, you know, like I said, back to the petsitting.com model, you know, what we do is we'll provide leads in real time and all it is is a cost per lead. So you're paying per lead, but it's based off of you're going to convert, let's say, 33 to, you know, 30 to 33 percent of the leads that we send to you. And you're going to be able to spend 80 to 100 dollars to win, you know, a long term client. And that doesn't even take into some of the intangibles of generating a new client, which is every time you get a new client, they also have friends and pet owners and, and peers that they, they're going to refer your service to if it's good. So, you know, the constant expansion will continue to bring a new business. So what we say to all of our clients is even a pet sitting client, let's say a pet sitting client uses, it's $100 per, let's say they use you three times a year, a pet sitting client, because a pet sitting client is not as frequent as a dog walking client per se. But we say in our industry, pet sitting clients will use you on vacation. So let's say they use you three times a year and it ultimately becomes $300 of revenue that they provide to you each year. So let's say on average, they stay with you for three years. A pet sitting client's lifetime value is probably $900. And so would you spend, let's say $80 to win that business? And the answer should be absolutely yes. Of course, I'll spend $80 to win that business. And that's what we try to really you know, get into the minds of these pet business owners and the pet service business owners is that you have to understand you're in a business where you have residual residuals coming in every month. You know, you can't just look at what you get for that one visit. And the funniest, you know, and I'm not funny, but like 
One of the most frequently asked questions that we get in our business, and our sales associates are trained to answer this because it happens very often, is we charge, let's say, $20 or $25 for a lead, you know, $25 average for a dog walking lead. Let's just use that as a good example. A prospective client will say to our sales associate, why would I spend $25 for a dog walking lead if I only charge, let's say, $15 to $17 for a dog walking visit? Mm -hmm. And that question in itself is a giant red flag because it shows that the pet business owner does not understand the future value of a client. You know, and then, you know, it takes our sales associate to take a step back and say, well, do you only walk that dog walking client one time on average? You know, is it usually you walk them once and they never contact you again and, and that's it? And, you know, the answer is usually no, no, no. You know, if I walk them, it's usually, you know, I could get a steady job and it will be a gig. Oh, okay. Well, then how much, you know, usually will you end up generating in revenue from that dog walking client in a month? Oh, well, you know, if it's three days a week, maybe $200 a month, five days a week, $300 a month. Okay. So, you know, if I told you that it costs $25 for this dog walking lead, but, and you're not going to win every lead, every lead that I send to you is not going to turn into a client, but let's say... The first lead I sent to you, you call and you don't win the business. The second lead I sent to you, you call and you don't win the business. The third lead I sent to you, you call and you do win the business. Now, you just spent $75, but you want a new dog walking client. That dog walking client costs you $75, and you're probably going to have them for the next year or so. You're going to make back that $75 within the first two weeks of servicing this client. And then you talk about that and you walk them through it. You get them feeling comfortable about, oh, you know, now they understand the whole concept around it. And this applies to all lead generation activities. And that's why I say referrals are the backbone of any business because that's just the lead gen that you get from running a good business. And mm -hmm. that will just maintain and keep you a status quo if you have a good business. Now, in order to grow your business beyond the reference side and to grow it and to expand, you have to work different lead generation models. And with our model, we do it so that you could focus on what you do best, servicing your business. Let us, as a company, focus on generating new leads so you could sit there and focus on the quality of your business, which will increase the references and referrals that you get uh, as a company. And the same goes for any of the other online marketing. If you learn or you source out to different companies or you learn the trait of online marketing, it could be a good lead gen source that could help you generate more business to help grow your business and not just sustain it at the current level that you're at. And that's why it's very important to have multiple lead generation sources, referrals, you know, word of mouth, local marketing efforts, which is the easiest way, like I said, with the flyers and the local trade mm -hmm. shows and put it going into pet stores and doing your own community buzz. And then the more technical aspects are the ones that you could look for companies like PetSitting.com, which would help you in terms of generating new business so you don't have to worry about focusing on the online marketing yourself. Or you could learn that, you know, if you really take courses and you learn how to do the AdWords and, and the different pay-per-click models on the Google sites, by all means, that could be a, a great source as well. So if your focus is to grow your business and to create a large, you know, a nice, sustainable, growing pet services business, it's very important to understand the business side of things. Be passionate about pets, but really understand the business side and learn the different options you have available for you for lead generation. Now, I, I want to highlight something that you've said because, and I don't want to gloss over it because this is the golden part of the interview and this is a part, if you haven't been listening up until now, folks, listen now because... This one piece that uh, that Jared's been mentioning can change your business, change your income, and you know, literally change your life. And that is understanding the lifetime value. And now you've kind of highlighted it based on the service that you offer. But folks, look at it from an outside perspective. You know, if it is that pet walking client that's going to be worth ten thousand dollars, and you're thinking about you know investing in a service uh, like uh, Jared's service, or if you're thinking about investing in an advertisement that costs five hundred dollars in a magazine. Well, if that $500 returns you two clients and that ends up being $20,000, that's a pretty good $500 spent. Or right. you know, if that $75 at Jared's company ends up being $10,000, that's a good $75 spent. Right. But on the same token, what that lifetime value allows you to do is it allows you to look at things differently. And so going back to what you said, you mentioned that you guys have found that in the pet walking industry, three years is a – you know when you take into account pets dying – people moving, changing service, three years is a pretty good metric is what you guys have found? Yeah, we, we found that dog walking clients, 
from our clients that we have that we've surveyed, and we found that dog walking clients usually stay on board for about three years. And, you know, the lifespan of a pet is, let's say, 10 to 15 years, but there's a lot of transitions that happen in one's life. You know, someone moves from house mm-hmm. to house and whatnot. So between those transitions, we found that three years is a good mark. And so that, uh, that gives somebody a metric. Let's say they're looking and, and they go and they analyze their data and they find out that their pet walking clients are only sticking with them for four or five months, they know that their lifetime value is a lot less and therefore Correct. they can invest less, which also makes them wonder or should make them wonder, what can I do better? How can I get my clients to stay longer because I'm not at the industry average? Right. And so understanding lifetime value shows you how much you can invest into getting the client, shows right. you where your problems are, shows you – you know, it shows you so many different metrics that if you can understand that one thing, from what I understand and from what you're telling me, that one thing can really change a business long term. Well, that one thing should dictate your marketing budget, your spend, how you do it. You know, like you mentioned, which was a good point. If you realize that you have dog walking clients only lasting, let's say, three, four, five months, and the industry average, let's say, is around three years. You know, you might have to take a step back and look at the quality of the service that you're offering. You know, how do you differentiate from your competition? Why are they leaving? You know, have some exit interviews and say, listen, you're a great client. I understand that you have to move on. Do you mind me asking, you know, what happened? What I, you know, what was the cause of you moving over and really getting an understanding as to why your averages are so much less than the, than the industry average because it'll help you overall with your business. The goal is the better quality service and product that you offer, the longer your clients will want to stay with you and then the larger your lifetime value will be, which will allow you to then invest into future business. Yeah, it it helps you continually make improvements to your service because maybe you are at three years, but you know, what would it take to get that extra three years in a month? And an extra three hundred dollars to a lifetime value means, you know, more money that you can spend getting that lead. And if you can outspend your competition and uh, you know, get more clients because you're able to spend more, because your clients pay you more, you're in great shape and you can literally dominate a marketplace is, is what I'm getting here. 100%. 100%. Excellent. So before we finish up here, I want to ask you do you, have any, uh, do you have any tips or tricks or clues on how to track leads? You know, As people are listening to this, I hope they're realizing, oh my gosh, I need to be tracking this stuff. I need to be tracking <laughs> what somebody's worth, how much it costs me. Any tips? You know, for a lot of the small companies out there, my tips are just doing it really, you know, bare bones. If you have, you know, a computer, which obviously I'm sure a lot of the companies should have, open it up, start a spreadsheet, really understand and track all your lead sources. So if you're working with a company like ours, like PetSitting.com, you know, make sure every lead that we send to you, you track the source you know, we do provide an online portal where it has full visibility, where we do all the tracking for you and you can log in and view your account at any time. But for any account that you're doing, let's say you're working four or five different lead generation programs, you should have a spreadsheet of all leads. And starting with, you know, okay, John Smith is a lead. He's a potential dog walker. He was a referral through one of our existing clients. You should have a spreadsheet that, you know, lists the source as referral uh, John Smith is the name, the phone number, the last time you contacted them, what was the last conversation that you had with them, and what are your next steps? And that should happen for all your sources. So if you're also doing um, flyers in a local store and someone calls you from a flyer and you say, oh, where did you hear from me from? They say, oh, I got this flyer from the store. Great. You now have another lead, you know, Mike Smith from pet store in, in your local community is the source and then you know what your conversation was like and what are the next steps and you should honestly a lead is very time sensitive when someone is looking for a service does the first person that calls back that client always win the business no but do they have an edge yes so if you have a lead and the lead was an inbound lead that came from a reference that came from a referral that came from a store that came from our service the first person that contacts back that lead and gets the live person on the phone always has a better shot of winning it than the next two that call. Obviously, the quality of service and everything plays a role, and it's not an exact science, but usually the first person to it always has a slight edge over everyone else. So it's important to be timely, follow up on leads timely, track them, make sure that you know as you close your leads, you understand and you figure out okay, I closed seven new clients this month. Three of them came from 
referrals. Two of them came from PetSitting.com. Two of them came from my local flyer store. And how much did I spend? Okay, on the referrals, that's just the cost of doing business. On PetSitting.com, I, I got two new clients and I spent $200. So I got a, a new two new clients for $100 a piece. On the flyers, I spent you know a few hundred dollars on the flyers and that resulted in me in two clients. Okay, so and now you have your understanding. And now you do that every month and then do a six month snapshot and then you can really get a full understanding of, of what's costing you the most, you know, what's driving you the most amount of money, what's costing you the most to generate a new client. And you might realize, listen, the flyers, that is actually my most expensive way of generating a new client. It actually cost me two hundred dollars for every new client I get. But you know what? It's still worth it. It's still profitable. So Obviously, referrals are the cheapest way to generate new business. And like I said, that's still the backbone of, of a great business. But that's not going to grow your business over what you want to grow it to. That's why you have other lead gen sources. So the flyers might cost $200 for every new client you get. But you know what? That $200 could be a lifetime value of, of $10,000 or a lifetime value of $1,000. So it still might be worth it even though it's more expensive. And that's just what you have to con- constantly analyze. You have to analyze – you know, the lifetime value and what's your cost to acquire that client and does it make sense? And if you ever come across a program in which you're spending five hundred dollars and you're and you're doing the math and the five hundred dollars never resulted in any business or you get a client you know way too infrequently and it becomes too risky, you know, that's basically on the spreadsheets and stuff that you maintain, that's the type of analysis that you should be able to do as a business. And that's, you know, a very good way to kind of run and analyze. And that, that's how you'll really be in a good direction to grow your business over and beyond just your referrals. And, you know, you'll be able to successfully branch out. And, and this has been some great information. Like I say, I hope people have been taking notes and figuring out how they're going to track their leads, how they're going to track the, you know, the return on their investment when it comes to running their business. So if, if uh, pet professionals are listening to this and they want to get more leads, how can they get in touch with you guys? Uh, simply, you know, visit, you know, petsitting.com is part of the family pet.com network. If you go to uh, petsitting.com, there's a, a way for pet professionals. There's a link there where they can just click on the link, fill out a form, and one of our sales professionals will contact them back, usually within 24 hours. They could also email info at petsitting.com or call toll free at 1 800 398. 6081 and just listen for the prompt for sales. You'll be connected to one of our sales associates and believe me, they'll spend a tremendous amount of time with you. They'll handhold you through the process. Once you sign on board, you'll be given a dedicated account manager who won't leave your side. You know, you have constant access to call them, email them. So you're not going to be left alone. They'll kind of walk you through exactly how everything works and you'll always feel comfortable knowing that someone's there making sure and you know, pushing to make sure that you're doing the best in your program and that you're you're calling the leads timely and you're you're working through the best methodology so that you could succeed on the program. Awesome. Jared, thank you so much for being on our show. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for having me. I think this was great. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for a show, please email me at ty at petliferadio.com or visit my website, sixfiguredogbusiness.com. Thanks for listening. I hope you've got some great information. Now time to put it to work on your business. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.